Hey everyone, this is Pastor Todd and Miss Daphne. We pastor here at Transformation Church in Seminole, Texas, and we believe that this message is going to impact your life. The vision of our church is to establish, equip, and expand believers, so that is always in our mind behind every message and everything that we do. We also want to invite you to join us live or online Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 10.30 a.m. We hope to see you soon. Amen. Y'all, this weekend was such a blast. It was awesome seeing. One of my favorite things in youth ministry is seeing the quiet sixth graders come in and then and then just open up in personality. And in camp, I love seeing everybody like calm, cool on Friday night. And then next thing you know, uh, or Thursday night, I'm sorry. Next thing you know, Friday night comes around. You're having to kick them all out of the building because they want to have an all-nighter of karaoke. <laughs> No, I'm just playing. We had a blast this past weekend, and um, God did amazing things. Like some students, for the first time, were hearing the voice of God, and some of them were even prophesying for the first time. That's something that the enemy will never be able to take away from them. Moments like that. And then the word throughout the weekend was just so timely. Um, Pastor David talked about uh, just encouraging us, inspiring us to um, that We've never seen anything like this type moments. Like, I wonder how that happened. Like, we've never seen anything like that. Well, those are the same, those are the words they were using when Jesus was walking around doing miracles. We've never seen anything like this. And how, like, in such a trying time in our lives, there are some things we need to, like, I don't know how this is going to work out. But it's going to work out, and it's going to be in a way we've never seen it happen. Amen. And then Pastor, Pastor Ben um, is amazing. He's in the house, Pastor Ben. Y'all give it up for Pastor Ben, Miss Tia, who are huge inspirations in my life. Hey, make sure you tell him happy birthday. His birthday's on Tuesday. Uh, I know most of you won't see him on Tuesday. Anyways, the big 3-0, 3 Wow. Anyways, uh, like Jeremy said, enough about you. <laughs> No, but he taught on prayer and what it means to pray without ceasing, and that is is just being connected to God. And he talked a little bit about prophecy and even allowed us to put it into practice on our uh, Saturday morning service. And it was so cool, and uh, God is just amazing. Amen? So if you see any of the students wearing E3 uh, shirts, uh, they look like this. Uh, or if you just see a youth, a student, ask them how the weekend was and just let them testify a little bit about how good God was this weekend. It was amazing. Before I jump into the message, I do want to ask all the leaders to stand up real quick, all the expand leaders. I couldn't do this without them, and obviously without the Holy Spirit. We got James, Maria, we got Zach, Miss Shannon, John, Matt, Miss Claudia, Abby, Jade, the Durans, Jeremy, and Andrea, and then Mr. John Gunther. He helped a little bit behind the scenes. And then uh, Melissa Fair as well. She is working this morning, but having a, I'm blessed with this team of leaders. I couldn't do it without each one of them. They all played a vital part into what uh, happened this weekend. Because it is not a one-man show. It is not Michael's ministry. It is not their ministry. But, like, when we come together as a team, um, but you, know how, you know that saying, where strong is the weakest link? You know, I, I don't like that saying. I like the saying, where as strong is the sum of us all together? So the sum of us all together, the unified team is just amazing, and I'm honored to have them. So thank you so much for everything you did. All right, y'all ready for the word? Well, uh, well, it's 11:45, so about 6:45, we should be good. No, I'm just playing. Um, if if you're expecting me to get you shouting this morning, that is not my message. This message, I'm gonna, it's gonna be some teaching. And I pray that it gives you an understanding as to why you've been wrestling with some things in your life. Um, Jeremy read the scripture. You can flip on over there to Matthew chapter 16. And uh, the title of my message or something I want you to leave with, if you don't get anything else from the scripture, only, always, Jesus. Only Jesus, always Jesus. What am I doing? going to do through this storm? I don't know, but I'm going to be focused only on Jesus, and I'm always going to be focused on Jesus. Amen? 
So Matthew 16, I guess I should have been flipping there too. Matthew 16, verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We're going to come back to this passage of scripture, but I want to focus on uh, 26 when we get to it. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever uh, loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Okay, uh, if you've been coming to church for a while you, and study the word, you know that we are a spirit being with a soul living in a body, right? A spirit with a soul living in a body. The, 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 the part of our soul or our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. Our, our, our soul is the way we think, the way we feel, and the way we decide. And Jesus is saying, what good is it to gain the whole world but lose the way you think feel and decide could it be that the reason you will never see breakthrough or or get over that anxiety is because you won't let go of the world like you're holding on to the world's ways of doing things and that's why you're losing your soul see i always thought this thing was was telling me i was going to lose my soul by going to hell no he's saying if you lay down your life right now you will find it right now You'll find a sense of purpose right now if you give up your ways right now. He's not saying you're going to, no, 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 right here in this moment, a lot of us are struggling with anxiety, oppression, uh, insecurity because we won't give up our ways and it's causing us to lose our soul. Gaining the world but losing our soul. So um, let's, let's read verse 26 again. For what profit? Is it to a man, if he gains the whole world, loses his own soul? One translation says, what benefit do you have if you have the whole world and lose your soul? Can I say, can I say this? What benefits, like, you're not blessed by what you have. You're blessed by, like, who you are. Okay, and let me clarify. Your blessing is based on your position and not your condition. You're, you're, you're positioned with the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit, in communion with him daily, in fellowship with him daily. That's why I'm blessed. I'm not blessed because I have the world. I'm blessed because I have the Father. So you're blessed because of who you are and not what you have. I'm blessed because of my position, not my condition. Look to your neighbor and tell him, only Jesus. And then look to somebody else that you really ignore and tell them, always Jesus. Only Jesus, always Jesus. So uh, I'm about to just have some fun with the Bible. I, I, I love how it's just intertwined and, and through, throughout it all. The New Living Translation of Matthew 24, uh, 16, 24 says, um, if you will give up your way, it tells you to, to, to give up your way. It doesn't say just deny yourself. It says give up your way. And we talked about, um, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. John chapter 14, verse 6, right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, right? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the, the way to the Father. And, and when you look up definitions, you break this down. He's saying, I'm the way you think and the way you feel i am the way you decide so jesus said i'm the way you should think feel and decide and if you don't do those things you can't come to the father so so we're we're, we're like because i've done it i'm done i've done it you know james chapter one verse six if anyone lacks wisdom let him ask let him ask in faith without doubting and if he doubts he's gonna be tossed by the sea uh and then it calls him double-minded Two minds set on the kingdom of God and set on um, things of this world. Okay? So, um, Jesus, have mercy. Give up your way. Give up your way. Lay down your thinking. Lay down your feeling. Lay down your deciding. Because if you don't do that and pick up his way of thinking, feeling, and deciding, we're going to always miss the promises that are being fulfilled in our lives because we want it to happen our way, not his way. Are you with me? I love that Jeremy hinted at it, that in Matthew 16, it said, it didn't say deny the enemy. 
It said, deny yourself. What you've been wrestling with in this, in this situation, I think many, many of us are wrestling with our plan and our agenda. Not the enemy, but wrestling with our own personal agenda. What does this look like? What does this look like? Okay, uh, maybe, maybe you believe God that is your provider, right? You believe God being your provider. But, so you got your mind, the kingdom, part of your mind, kingdom of God. God is my provider. But the other side of your mind is set on, I need a well-paying job. I need all the hours. And if I don't get a promotion, there's no way I'm going to be uh, provided for. That's double-minded. It's got to happen through this job. It's got to happen with more hours. The only way I can find love is it's got to happen through this relationship. It's got to happen with this person. And God is just saying, lay down that, si- that, that, that way of thinking. Quit feeling that way. Quit deciding that way. And quit. Y'all with me? Yeah. Only Jesus. Always Jesus. So how did, how did, here's the thing. How did Jesus think? How did Jesus feel? How did Jesus decide? We know the story when he was a young boy and, and his parents lost him. He was, in the, he was in the synagogue and he was like talking about scripture. And he said, do you not know that I'm supposed to be about my father's business? So he's thinking about the father. He's deciding according to the father. Are y'all getting this? Are you with me? We can flip on over to, to Ephesians chapter, chapter uh, 4. Right here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, it says, But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have learned or heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Can we get the New Living Translation of that up? So we can read it. But that, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Um, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes, your thoughts and attitudes, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you decide. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts, attitudes. Why do we need to do that? Because it's all, our, our soul is always going to want to rise up and keep sticking to our way of thinking, feeling, and deciding. We got, if we want to follow Jesus, we're going to have to deny our thoughts. We're going to have to d- deny our ways and, and, and the way, deny the way we would decide. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We've got to follow after him. Amen. Over here in Philippians chapter, chapter uh, 2, I believe it's verses 3, like 6. We can read that in the New Living Translation as well. It says, don't be selfish. Tell your neighbor, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than themselves, or yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Uh, verse 5 says, you must have the same attitude. Everybody say attitude. attitude. That Jesus Christ had. You must have the same attitude that Jesus had. In order for us to live a life selfishly, thinking more about others, you're going to have to change your attitude about some things. And that comes by allowing the Holy Spirit to renew your mind, getting in the word, and being transformed by it. Amen. And then the last scripture we're going to look at this morning is in uh, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, and this is verse 37. It says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. I'm going to reread that with... (laughs) You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind, with all your will, and with all your emotions. If we want to love the Father, we want to honor the Father, we want to worship the Father, Matthew 16 says we got to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. 
Would you lay down the way you think about things, feel about things, and decide about things, and pick up the way that Jesus thinks about that? Amen? I told you it wasn't going to be a shouting message. But I pray this just helps you. I pray the Holy Spirit helps you recognize situations you've been struggling in. That it's not the enemy, like, yes, we wrestle against flesh and blood. But I want you to know that pride will keep you fixed. (laughs) Pride will keep you holding on to a certain plan, a certain thing, uh, until it comes to pass. And sometimes we'll be standing in faith in it. You said you'd provide. You said you'd make a way. You said I'd be healed. You said there's fullness of joy. Just speaking the word, speaking the word over your own plan and not walking according to God's plan. Amen.